For some weeks now, the Edo State House of Assembly has been embroiled in a power tussle, a contest which is largely believed to be a proxy war between interests that represent the incumbent governor of the state, Godwin Obaseki, and the national chairman of the ruling APC, Adams Oshiomole. The dramatic intervention by the National Assembly in the festering crisis of meltdown of democracy, which has claimed the Edo State House of Assembly as its epicenter, leaving the institution as a theater of the absurd instead of the temple of democracy. Specifically, the 24-member House had nine of them sworn in on June 17, 2019, who proceeded to elect a speaker, Frank Okie, while two additional ones two days later joined them. The remaining 13 members have been floating in a state of political oblivion. In the context of parliamentary practice and rule of law, Sahara TV's countermeasures examines the legal implications of the political squabble in an interview with a legal practitioner and university teacher, Barrister Wahab Shitu. For some weeks now, the Edo State House of Assembly has been embroiled in a power tussle. Some have looked at it that it's a proxy war between the incumbent governor, uh, Godwin Obaseki, and the national chairman of the APC, Edam Zoshiomole. Let's get your insights, sir, on the festering crisis. Why this crisis at this time? Well, thank you. It is not for me to speculate on whether the crisis has to do with... Uh, a clash of interest between the incumbent governor and the chairman of the party. I don't want to speculate on that because the political actors, they do not have permanent friends. All they have is permanent interest. So I don't want to go in that area. But we operate a constitutional democracy. And so all actions must be assessed in the context of respect for constitutionalism, respect for rule of law, respect for due process, transparency and accountability, among all, all other indicators of the fundamentals of the democratic tradition. So the question to ask is whether what is going on is in conformity with the provisions of the constitution, which is the ground norm. My take is if we look at section 91 of the constitution, it tells you clearly the membership of a state house of assembly not less than 24 and not more than 40 must constitute the membership of a state house of assembly that's what section 91 says so in other words a state house of assembly cannot be duly constituted with membership less than 24 it can also not be more than 40. So if you want to, so any state of assembly whose membership is less than 24 is like, it's clearly an illegal contraption because it will not be duly constituted by law, by the clear provision of section 91. If you now go to section 96, it says that the quorum of a state house of assembly shall be constituted by one third of the members. So, it follows that a community reading of section 91 and section 96 will say, okay, assuming we have 24 members, a quorum will only be duly constituted by one third of that. If you have 40, a quorum will be duly constituted with one third of 40. So, if you now have a situation where just we have nine members of a state of assembly. That clearly is a violation of the constitution. It is for you to go and read the constitution, section 91, clearly. It says a state house of assembly cannot be constituted with, by membership which is less than 24. Or more than 40. So if you have membership that is 41, that is not a state house of assembly. If you have membership that is 23, that is not a state house of assembly. 
That is what the constitution says. And by section 1, subsection 2, as well as section 1, subsection 3, the constitution is the uncommanded commander. So, if I want to follow that interpretation, by virtue of section 91, nine members cannot constitute a state of assembly. It's not what I'm saying. It's what the constitution says. Whoever that interpretation now favors, I don't want to know. Because I know that the constitution is the ground norm in a constitutional democracy. The uncommanded commander. So if you have no members in the State House of Assembly, that is not properly constituted. You cannot even be talking of a quorum of nine members. Because that is outside the provisions of the constitution. So the question to ask is, are we saying it's only nine members that were duly elected for the for the Edo State House of Assembly? Only nine members were elected? <laughs> if only nine members were elected, that's not the State House of Assembly. By the constitution. Now, if you have all, more than nine members elected, why were they not inaugurated? Is it because they are willing to be inaugurated or there are obstacles in the way of the inauguration. So you could be able to make clear distinction. I think political actors are against any form of godfatherism in our body politics. Because that betrays the fundamental tenets of democracy, which is government of the people by the people for the people. Sovereignty should lie with the people. But that can only also operate in the context of respect for constitutionalism. You understand me? So, while we may sympathize with not any of the actors, depending on our loyalties and allegiance, if you want to resolve this dispute, we will go back to the constitution. Let all those who are elected by the people of Edo State into Edo State House of Assembly, let them convey and decide. If there are practical difficulties preventing them from convening, orchestrated by any of the parties, such actions must be determined with reference to the constitution. You understand me? Again, where you have nine members, instead of the requisite 24 prescribed by the constitution, what that shows to you is that there is no legislative body in existence in the new states. And the constitution does not envisage a vacuum. When there is such scenario, the National Assembly takes over. Because it, just, it shows clearly that the Edo State House of Assembly is unable to discharge its legislative functions. Considering the takeover huh? by the National Assembly, I crave your indulgence. Yes. The Federal House of Representatives actually weighed into the crisis at some point in time. A special committee was actually set up into to look into the uh, into the crisis. And part of the recommendations of that special committee includes the fact that a fresh inauguration or proclamation by the governor is to be uh, issued. And that is actually seen largely as illegal. Let's get your legal perspective on this. Who should issue or who should ask for the governor to make that proclamation? Is it the Federal House of the Representatives or the Senate itself? It's the National Assembly. If the Federal House of Representatives has made such a proclamation, it cannot be, it is, it is incoherent. It is not complete. No. You understand me? The Senate also must sit as a body and take such a decision. And jointly they must issue such a directive. What the state, what what, what the law envisages is that it is a takeover by the National Assembly of the legislative functions of any state house of assembly that is unable to discharge its legislative functions. Either because in this case, that uh, those state house of assembly is not duly constituted. I'm not the one saying so. It is the constitution that is saying so. That because 
only membership of the 24 is recognized to constitute a house. So, if a proclamation has been done previously, it is, it is a proclamation that is founded on nullity. Hmm. And you see, most commentators about our national affairs, exactly. whether lawyers or, what, or whatever expertise they claim, must comment based on informed perspectives. You cannot begin to talk about constitutional law without reference to the constitution. Because that's the ground norm. And everybody has access to it. I've made some sub submissions that if you want to test it, go and see the constitution. The membership of a state house of assembly can only be duly constituted by virtue of the constitution. Let me let us read it together so that uh, because we are talking to people who are far better informed than we can possibly be exactly. who are outside there. That's right. Listening to us. And so we should not we should not confuse issues. Section 91 says, and I read, composition of the House of Assembly. It says, subject to the provisions of this constitution, a House of Assembly of a state shall consist of three or four times the number of seats which the state has in the House of Representatives, divided in a way to reflect as far as possible nearly equal population, provided that a House of Assembly of a state are consist of not less than 24 and not more than 40 members. So, a House of Assembly of nine members is not a House of Assembly. Eh? You understand me? By what the Constitution has said. But they are not up to 24. And so, a proclamation of nine members is not a proclamation. A decision made by nine members is not a decision. Is null and void, ultra virus of no effect whatsoever. That is the constitution. So, the next question that logically arises again is whether nine members who are not duly constituted can form a quorum. That's exactly where I'm going to. <laughs> because, uh, like several other political <laughs> issues, the, the Nigerian constitution is silent on the numbers of members required at the inauguration as, as quorum. What's the. What's the uh, it's so clear. The section 96 has also answered a question like that. So the issue of, I, I will want to disagree with you on whether on the issue of whether the constitution it's is silent. Uh, silent. So the quorum of the House of Assembly shall be one third of all members of the House. Of all. And this is elementary interpretation. So if you have 24, which is the limit, all of them, you can only locate a quorum in the context of one third of 24. And if you have a full house and you have 40, it can only be one third of 40. It says, the quorum of the House of Assembly shall be one third of all the members of the House. It didn't say all the members of the House present. You understand me? All the members of the house. And if, if section 91 says that the limit, the limited number that we can have is 90, is uh, 14. If you don't have a 40, 14 members, there is no house. There's no house. So what, what, what you are asserting, sir, is that it is not obligatory mm -hmm. to for every member elect to be present for inauguration as the speaker is uh, empowered to swear others at their convenient time. When, is, that, is that what you're saying? The, the interpretation that I want to give which I think is consistent with the constitution is that if we have nine members, then no valid proclamation can take place. But that's not the House of Assembly. By a community reading of section 91 and section 96. So what is going on in the State House of Assembly now is an illegal contraption. It's an illegality. So if you if you are, if, if you want what is going on to be legitimized, then go and amend the constitution. And there are elaborate procedure for amending the constitution as stipulated under section nine. You cannot amend the constitution of this country of, without going through the process of the national assembly and then the thirty-six states who must concur or donate their consent to the arrangement. It's a very tedious exercise. It is, it is. So. We can, as I we change this constitution, amend it. The current law is that there is no House of Assembly in the Edo State. 
Let me, <laughs> you know? let me also get your perspective on this. The Edo State government mm. actually cited the subsisting court ruling barring security agencies from interfering with the normal operations of the House of Assembly. And uh, thus, the security agents can only operate there if there, any, uh, there is an instance or threat of breakdown of law and order. Well, that is an order that is consistent uh, that is consistent with constitutional democracy. When there is a court order which says you cannot interfere in legislative functions, it is one court order that is salutary. Because, you see, the powers of the le legislature is defined by Section 74, by Section 4. The powers of the executive is stipulated in Section 5 of the Constitution. The powers of the judiciary are highlighted in Section 6 of the Constitution. So everybody has their own powers in, in the true spirit of separation of powers. It will, it will be illegal for security operatives to interfere with the exercise of the legislative functions. Because that will violate Section 4. It will also be illegal for security operatives to exercise with, with executive powers. But that will be violating of Section 5. It will also be illegal for the execu uh, for security operatives to interfere with the exercise of judicial powers. Well, that will also violate Section 6. Because we, are, we operate a constitutional democracy which is strengthened by respect for separation of powers. But the question you want to ask in this instance is, is there a legislative power to be exercised in the industrial House of Assembly currently? My answer is no. There's no legislature in place in Edo State. Nine cannot form a, a, a legislative house by virtue of Section 91 of the Constitution, which says the minimum number is uh, 14. And when the word shall is used in the legislation, it is mandatory. It is obligatory. It is always construed in the obligatory sense. With rare instances where they can say, okay, may. But the way it is used is in this it shows that it shall be 14. And most commentators are not looking in that direction. There are some people who have taken the view that it should be, it should be uh, a quorum should be one third of nine. That's an absurdity. Because nine is not a number recognized by the constitution as forming the, and you are holding the constitution yourself. You can read it yourself. The constitution is structured in such a way that it should be available to everybody. Because the language is simple for us to read. Most prob one of the problems we have is that we try to enthrone our whims mm. instead of finding succor with respect for the rule of law. Mm. Most of the uh, impeachments and some other things that have been carried out from our recent history, most of them are illegal. Mm. Some, some, some members of the will go and convey in an hotel or they will leave their location and go mm. and to, to some funny place and then they will pass a resolution saying, Somebody is impeached as a governor or something like that. that. That's not the way the constitution envisages. The constitution envisages that if you want to impeach a governor, for instance, you must do so within the pre premises of, of the other chambers. So when you move to a funny hotel or some kind of hideout and begin to issue proclamation as if we are in a jungle democracy, it cannot work because we operate a constitutional democracy. Let me ask that. Do, do you see any untoward fallout? for the APC from this crisis? Uh, well, let me say that in spite of the sympathy I have for President Buhari and the Vice President, Professor Yomri Osibajo, who incidentally yes. was my former lecturer, for whom I have a lot of respect, I think the APC as a ruling party is uh, not putting his... Is not indulging in sufficient housekeeping. And uh, any ruling party or any party that fails to respect the rule of law endangers its position. No matter how our true stake is intentions might be. So my position is that when the rule of law is sidetracked in any democratic setting, anarchy looms. Why do we have why, why do we say we, we are the, we, the option is constitutional democracy? Why are we practicing democracy founded on the rule of law? It's because we have said, okay, we have covenanted to abide by the law. 
It doesn't matter who is involved, whether our friends or our enemies. You must respect the law. If you want to deal with your enemies, you, when you deal with your enemies in the context of respect for the rule of law, mm. nobody will be raised an eyebrow. You might have some other ulterior motives. But because you follow the law, such motives will not be seen. But when you subvert the law, even when you are dealing with your enemies, of course, you are not practicing democracy. So what I'm saying today, the, 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 the final, my final take on this will be that the governor of Edo State and the chairman of APC, Comrade Adam Oshomoli, must know that they are very, very important people. Very, very important people. And they occupy very, very important positions. But no matter how important or big they are, the law is bigger. And that's the point I want to make. They should not see themselves as superior to the law. Of the country. The part of sanity is for the house, those who are who are who have been voted across all the localities that comprise Edo State into the Edo State House Assembly. They should be allowed to convey and take a decision. You see, the beauty of democracy is that it, it, it recognizes the element of choice, the, the supremacy. Of the factor of choice. Mm. So if you, if people with their eyes wide open decide to vote for a bad a, a madman, mm. that's their choice. Mm. Eh? Or take an irresponsible decision. It's their choice because what you will say that if you take a, a decision that is irresponsible, that is that defies logic or rationality, then you must be prepared to cope with the consequences. But you cannot prevent people from taking a decision. So are you inferring, sir, that the authority that is most favorably disposed to resolve this crisis is the ruling APC party itself? Uh, well, I will also say, in the context of the, the constitutional democracy, the authority that can resolve this crisis is the National Assembly. Let them take over the legislative functions of the, uh, the State House of Assembly and then ensure while taking over those functions, that those who are elected by the Edo people into the State House of Assembly are properly conveyed. And when they are properly conveyed, let them then supervise a realistic decision flowing from their choice. The choice can, the decision can favor the governor, fine. It can favor Australia, fine. But the two actors must recognize that no matter how big they are, the law is bigger. Finally, sir, finally, let's just get this clear. What, in your opinion, should be done to resolve the Edo State democracy meltdown to, and to hold the acrimony at this time? Well, the solution is simple. Respect for constitutionalism and respect for due process. Above all, respect for the rule of law. That is the way to go. And secondly, the principal actors must sit their walls. We don't know what they discuss in the comfort of their bedrooms. And we don't want to know what is primary to the Nigerian people and to the other people is for them to have access to democracy dividends. And none of them should deny them that by their ego, pride, or whatever. Thank you very, very much, sir, for your insightful analysis, sir. My pleasure. Mm.